Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and Huber Engineered Woods. Before we jump into Build Science 301 and all things control layers, I want to take just two minutes to highlight something that deserves more attention in our industry, fire protection. We talk a lot about air, water, vapor, and thermal, but what about fire as a control layer? That's where Firepoint from Arklin comes in. Firepoint is an advanced fire resistant sheathing that's engineered to give you serious performance without slowing down your build. It offers up to 53% more fire resistance than code requires, helping to slow flame spread, buy time for evacuation, and give first responders better access when it matters most. This is a solution designed for builders and architects who want real fire performance without sacrificing efficiency. The base of Firepoint is real CDX plywood, so it's lightweight, easy to install, and it's compatible with any cladding, so you're not locked into one finish or system. Firepoint is especially valuable in wildfire prone regions, but honestly, it's a smart choice for any project where safety is a priority. And when we talk about smarter building science, that's exactly what we mean products that both elevate safety and performance within a modern wall assembly. We're not just building to code anymore, we're building to face future challenges head on. So if you're designing for resilience, specifically fire resilience, stall flames and save lives with Firepoint. I'm Matt Reisinger, stay tuned for more right here on Build Science 301. All right, my friends, welcome back to Build Science 301. This is the first episode where we're getting into some details. I got my buddy Steve Basic here. Steve, what are we talking about today? Today we're gonna to talk about foundations, specifically slab on grade and turn down slab. All right, and not only that, Steve spent a ton of time, wait till you see the series, we've got a ton of details. So which detail you wanna start on, Steve? So if we flip to it, the format is such that we're gonna have three screens for these details. The first one, we're just calling it the detail. We're gonna outline the detail, we're gonna just talk specifically about what that detail is, and then we're gonna switch screens to the next one where we're gonna show what the challenges are. And then the third screen is the solution that we could talk about. We could certainly talk about some options. And so, as Steve's talking, I'll make some commentary on where, you, where I've seen these details. Uh, Steve and I both have traveled <laughs> extensively, uh, both in the US and internationally, but it's interesting to see some of these details are more common in particular parts of the country. So yep. wherever you're watching from, we're gonna make mention of some of those details. Let's get into it. The detail, slab on grade, this is pretty standard. Footing, stem wall, and then some kind of shelf. Yep. Right, pretty standard. I call it a three-piece foundation. Turn down slab, this economizes that in that you can dig this trench here with a single 16-inch wide bucket and then scrape the slab, put a piece of formwork out here, and then pour that for economy's sake. Almost everything that is done in Texas is some version of a turned down slab, uh, where you have some type of what I would call a grade beam, yep. uh, and some cross hatching, some additional beams. So this is really common for us here. On the other hand, the slab on grade that's, that's more of a deeper footing, like you see there, yep. we typically see that in areas where we've got a frost line that's 12 inches, 24 inches, 36 inches. So it depends a little bit in the south. A lot of the south, I'm in climate zone two in Texas. We don't have a lot of frost or, or uh, what's the word? Free thaw. Free thaw, thank you. I don't, we don't have it, so I don't think about it. Uh, whereas some other parts of the country where we do have that, you're noticing that footing is really far here. down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we've actually, I have probably about 7,000 homes in New Mexico with that system is that right? okay. on there. And uh, we're doing a house right now just outside of Phoenix in Cave Creek and it has that detail. Footing go. is up here, but it's that same detail. Same detail, yeah. I like it. So every detail has a challenge, right? Water management, air management, vapor management, and thermal management. If you remember from Build Science 101, where we talked about the control layers and talked about each one of those specifically, you'll have a really good knowledge of what we're talking about here. Yep. Each one of these details you can see here, we have our air, coming through here. Anytime we change materials, concrete to wood, mm -hmm. we have challenge. crevices, things aren't quite aligned, quite right. Um, I have air here. Now, give you a second to think about, why did I put air there? Obviously, if I put my lips to the slab and blow, I'm not blowing air through there. <laughs> but 
there's a part of air management, especially up in New England, that we're very concerned with, and some parts of the rest of the country. Yeah. Radon gas. That's right. Right. And radon is a soil gas that comes up from the soil, and oftentimes our houses have some negative pressure, and so those soil gases are coming up from that slab, whether that's a joint between the two concrete pores, sometimes that's pipes that have shrunk around the concrete. There's a lot of different ways that, that air, but that's basically an air management issue. Yeah. So water management, everything gets rained on, that water is going to come down and accumulate. One of the beauties of slab, I call it slab on grade, it is in fact on grade, but it is slightly above grade here. Yeah, right? that's a good There's point. a dimension there. Yep. So the beauty of the slab on grade and the turndown slab is just by virtue of its detail or design, it has really good water management. Yeah, that's right. We don't have that in-ground foundation. We're going to get to that in the next episode. But for now, we have a more forgiving assembly. Right. Vapor management, right, going up through the slab and up through the slab there. These are virtually the same. That's just monolithic pour yeah. three. And then, of course, thermal management, insulation. Chances are it is always moving in that direction. Yeah. Typically, right. uh, you know, we think of this soil down here is 50 degrees or so. Right. And if you're trying to heat your house in the winter to 70 degrees, let's say, you've got a lot of heat loss through the slab. And in fact, when I look at my energy reports uh, from my HVAC designer, I'm usually seeing in the wintertime 25% if I don't have an insulated slab of my heating is going right in through that slab. It's basically sucking the heat right out of the house. Yeah. And if you remember in 101, where we talked about the concept of thermal bridging, notice we have the outside of the insulation or the outside of the foundation wall here, and we have a direct connection of a high con highly conductive material in the concrete where we can have heat loss through there. And of course, the turndown slab is infamous for being a comfort um, villain. Yeah, big time. Right. So let's talk about solutions. Here you can see water management, like we said, we took care of that by virtue of the distance. Yep. As far as air management, I went with my detail where we have a sill sealer there with a couple beads of sealant, and that makes up that difference. That's a, such a good detail, Steve. We use that a bunch. Basically what Steve's talking about is on top of the concrete, before we put that bottom plate down, we're going to run a bead of several different options out there. You know, Lexel is a great choice Lexel's that I used on the, the Reisinger build recently. And then we're going to put our seal sealer down. And then we're going to put another bead of Lexel down. And then you see that double bottom plate going down. It could be a single bottom plate too. Yep. But what it's going to do is it's going to make that, that connection from an air perspective much, much tighter than before. And Steve, you mentioned it. Our concrete slabs, we think they're flat but they're really those, those small undulations. And I remember the very first house I built that didn't have, uh, they, they decided not to put base in the house. They wanted this real modern design. Mm -hmm. uh, so we didn't put any base. We had like a regular detail at the bottom of the sheetrock and I just had standard seal sealer, which at the time I thought, oh, that's gonna, it's seal sealer, of course, it's gonna seal that. Yeah. Well, after they moved in, they called me and said, man, you know, when the wind blows, I can feel it, that cold air at my feet in the dining room table, I thought, what? I have sill sealer on there. Yeah. It was a real visual and customer complaint reminder to me that that is a really leaky connection that needs that extra care. Yeah. So, and then as far as vapor, we have our vapor retarder there. Yeah. Vapor barrier. Yeah, that's right. right. Stego is Stego a great, is a great, great choice. choice. Yeah. For that, and that's pretty much a no-brainer. It's putting that down, and that also takes care of that radon gas, yep. right? You can envelope it, grab it with a pipe, and have it exit through the roof of the building. Yep. And then lastly, insulation. And the thing about insulation, some people might put it under the slab or just put it here, but remember, we had that loop coming through, so mm -hmm. we really want to encase that slab mm, that's a great in point. insulation. The perimeter insulation. Don't forget the perimeter. Yeah, this is probably, this piece right here is probably the most important piece of insulation that you can put in the house. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is this, when you step on a slab, 
that's one of the very few times our body actually comes in direct contact with the building, right. if you think about it. Right, good point. And standing out here in the winter when it's zero degrees there would make for a very cold slab. So that was the three point. Yep. Talk to us about the turndown. So the turndown slab, very similar. As far as uh, water goes, we're good with that dimension. Yep. There. I mean, self-explanatory. As there. a side note, I like to see generally eight inches of foundation yeah. showing on all my projects. Yep. And remember, even if you have a brick lug, you still want that foundation showing. So I would do your brick lug up here to maintain that eight inches. That's going to make a huge difference from water. And as a side note, I always say when I remodel houses that the majority of the rot is in the bottom two feet of the house. It's where the splashback happens. Mm -hmm. It's where the bugs come in. It's where the... Cockroaches come in. It's where the, uh, you know, all the bad stuff happens in the bottom two feet. Yep. And then as far as air sealing, we use that same detail. So we'll put the beta sealant on top of the sill sealer and below the sill sealer. I call it the Z sandwich. Yeah, that's a great way to right? explain it. I like that. And then as far as vapor barrier, this one here, we have the Stego and we'll put it on top of the insulation mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, in terms of that, and we said we were going to talk about options, I mean, if we did this as, a, say, a foil face polyiso, you could tape that and probably get away with it being a vapor barrier. Yeah, and, you know, another way to do it, too, which we did on another project that you outlined for us, the Reisinger build, is you could also put that stego uh, down here like this yep. uh, continuously. We did that on the Reisinger build, uh, and that worked out real well for us. That way I didn't have to deal with it because what you're about to see is a detail that Steve came up with that is absolutely genius that I think you've kind of coined the term raft slab, is yep. that right? Yep, and for all that, we simply put down insulation, and the beauty of this detail is you can get away with two inches here if you're, say, in Alabama or Texas, mm -hmm. but if you did this detail, say, in Montana, you might bump that up to four inches. Yeah, that's right. Or even six inches, Yeah. right? So you have the flexibility to pretty much dial in whatever that thermal um, channel or solution for that, and then simply have two pieces of three-quarter inch Advantech in this case that just crisscross each other on top and create an inch and a half raft. I did that in my house a couple years ago, Steve, and I gotta tell you, it's one of my favorite details that no one notices because my floors feel great. You know, we're standing on a concrete slab here in the studio. After we film for an hour or two, my knees start to hurt a little yep. bit. But standing on that subfloor that has just a little bit of There's give, a little bit of give in boy, here. does it make a difference. And so it it's not just the comfort on um, thermal comfort in this case. There is a, there's some human comfort involved in this detail, yeah. too, that I really like. For sure. And what actually drove that detail the very first time, well, the very first time I did it, I did it at my own house. And if you're looking to put a hardwood floor up here, mm -hmm. you need something that you need to nail that That's into. Right. right? So you, that raft now gives you an inch and a half. You can put tile, carpet, yeah. hardwood floor, very traditional floor systems. They're all easily accepted by that detail. And it ends up being about the same amount of work and same cost as a, uh, a sleeper system that we've done yeah. on a lot of projects that I did in the past prior to, to this detail. I absolutely love this detail. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. I do notice that you use the word a uh, solution rather than the yes. solution here, Steve. Will you explain that? Well, that's because we have options, yeah. right? We, we talk about this being two inches, four inches, or six inches. The air barrier, for example, some guys would come here and just tape that, Yep. right? Yeah, so there's right. there's other ways to do that. the things that we're trying to solve for in the challenge. So, yeah, I put a solution because people say, well, you can do it this way or you can do it that way. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to skin the cat. This is the way I chose to draw it for this detail. I like it. Well, there you have it. I mean, that's the first building assembly, the three-piece and the turndown slab. So I love it. All right, my friends, stay tuned for episode two where we're going to get into basement foundations and crawl spaces. Like our friend Joe Stieberg would say, it's not rocket science. It's build science. <laughs> Don't forget. We got quizzes. We got booklets after this. So the fun doesn't stop at the vibe board. That's right. So at the end of each episode of Build Science 301, you're going to have the opportunity to take a five-question quiz. Answer all five of those right, and then go through all 11 modules on Build Science 301. And our team is going to send you a certificate that says that you passed Build Science 301. 
And we have that for 101 and 201, right Steve? There we go. Don't forget, this is totally free. There is no charge. I think you should really take the time and make sure you get recognized for your efforts and your time. Get that certificate. This is a really big deal and this is a good foundation for the rest of your career. Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and Huber Engineered Wood.